goodness, it's going to be a good day. My heart's just melted seeing that little fella right there. God is so good. Page 441. Let's sing about rescuing the perishing. Uh-oh. Is she coming? Okay. 441. We've got a guest speaker this morning, and this will go along with what they do what the Gideons do and, and what our job is to go out into the world to rescue the perishing. Step across the aisle and greet someone this morning and, and put a smile on your face, if you will. It looks rough from up here. But, but if you're sick, please don't be talking to my little man over there. He's glad to, he's glad to say hello, but we can't give him anything. All right. Though, Though they, they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the parent a child to receive. Plead with him earnestly, plead with him you to be here to worship. Uh, we're excited about today, excited about what God's going to do, and we do welcome uh, towns, and what a blessing, Jeremy and Lanier and their family, and that's right, buddy, right up here, right here, high five, right? Here's, here's what we do for towns today. We love him from a distance, okay? We love him from a distance. We just need to uh, I know everybody is excited about seeing him and would love to go up and touch and pat and love on him, but uh, just do this. Give him a high five from a distance, if you would, today. And let him know that you care. We're glad that he's here today. We're glad that all of you are here today. What a very special blessing. This morning, uh, we have a guest with us, uh, uh, David McPhail. David is with the Gideons International and is here representing that organization today. He's going to be sharing with us in just a few minutes, but David's from Hattiesburg down... Um, in the Oak Grove community, and uh, we're glad. David was, told me that he'd been here about uh, three or four years ago uh, and uh, had a real good experience here, and, and we're glad to have David back with us today. David's been with the Gideons for over 20 years. I believe this is his 20th year uh, with the organization. We're excited about hearing from him today. And you'll have an opportunity to support and be a part of Gideons International at the close of our service. We'll let you know a little bit about that, uh, a little bit more detail. But let me pray for us before we get started. And, and then we'll have David come and share. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have in just coming and worshiping today. Lord, what a blessing. What a blessing it is just to, to be together as God's family. Father, I pray that you would help us to set aside the things that 
tend to occupy our mind and our spirit that would hinder us from focusing all of ourselves on you. So Lord, just uh, help us as we worship. Help us, Father, through the presence and power of your Spirit, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds through the music, through the spoken word, through the written word. Father, you be God in this place today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Be seated. David, come. One plus five plus 15 equals 500. You may say, now that, that's some funny math. How, that, how does that work out? Uh, there was a young man many years ago in the Philippines by the name of Herberto Tica. He's a 12-year-old Roman Catholic altar boy, and he got one of our uh, Gideon Place Testaments there, and he started to read that Testament, brother, and uh, the Lord uh, brought him to Christ. He came to know Christ, and that's a wonderful testimony, but there's a whole lot more because he felt called to be a pastor, and he had a simple prayer request. He said, uh, Lord, would you allow or would you call all five of my sons to be pastors? And you know, the Lord answered his prayer even more than he had asked for because the Lord not only called all five of his sons into the pastorate, but he also called all 15 of his grandsons and the Tika family. The Lord has used them to plant over 500 churches in the Philippines. So one plus five plus 15 does equal 500 in that sense. We're thrilled to be with you today, the Gideons International. We are Christian business and professional men, and we have one mission. And folks would say to hand out those Bibles. Well, actually, our mission is to win men, women, boys, and girls to Jesus Christ. Now, we do that through the placement of God's worth, through a personal placement ourselves, and just in, in our, what we call the traffic lanes of life around the world. I mean, we place Bibles, and you probably know in hotels and motels, you've seen them, but we also place them in in schools like the fifth grade, in colleges like the community college, the junior college system. We also place them at the University of Southern Mississippi and State and Ole Miss as well. And the Lord's blessed those efforts. The Lord also uh, has blessed us to be able to place uh, scriptures to our military and to policemen and firemen and emergency medical technicians. Also to be able to minister in the jails and the prisons and many other avenues as well. You know, we are an extended missionary arm of your church because we're the pastor. In 1908, it was a pastor who had the idea, hey, we need to partner with the Gideons to, uh, and help finance them and pray for them so they can start placing these Bibles in hotels and motels. So, you know, we've been partners in ministry together for about 107 years now. Isn't that incredible? And the Lord's blessed that partnership because now we're in 200 different countries and we publish scriptures in 101 different languages and last year the Lord blessed us with our best year ever in placing 88.5 million scriptures around the world. We had another exciting event happen just a few months ago at the end of April. We were able to place our two billion scripture somewhere in the world and you know we just are so excited about those things but even with all those statistics it all comes down to one, or maybe just a few. And that brings us to a testimony we received just a short time ago from the Dominican Republic. Our field representative to that area, Brother Robinson Candelero, he joined with Gideons from the Nabok camp in the Dominican Republic. They were making a distribution to a police station. Now it was a small facility, and in that facility, a small jail, and they had six young male prisoners. And they gave each one of those a, a scripture. And then Brother Robinson shared with those young inmates, you know, the plan of salvation that God had provided for them. And, and they started to really listen, those guys, especially one prisoner. His name was Wander Tejeda. And, you know, he was very moved. And he actually said, you know, I have sold drugs. I've robbed people. And my life is a mess. And I want to change. I want to have a different life than I have now. And so Brother Robinson asked this earnest young man, would you like to give your heart to Christ? And he did accept Jesus as his Savior. And then when the other five men saw what had happened to Wander, well, they decided to give their hearts to Jesus too. All six of those prisoners came to know Christ. But that's still not the end of the story because a young lady came into the jail about that time as they were leaving and they stopped to speak to her. Her name was Nirka Mendez. And when they uh, talked to her just a moment, they found out she was Wander Tejeda's wife. So they told her what had just happened, shared the plan of salvation with her, 
And she also became a new believer in Christ. Seven people coming to know Christ in a small jail in the Dominican Republic. Just shows just how the Lord can work through the power of His Word. And we're also excited to be now legally distributing scriptures in the People's Republic of China. In fact, today we've distributed around 3 million in 14 different provinces. These scriptures, they are placed a little bit differently. They're by international Gideon teams. And we make them available through Christian-owned businesses because that's just the way the culture is in there. But we praise God for those open doors across Asia because one out of every three people in the world are in Asia. You know, for example, last year we placed over a million scriptures in the country of India. And we thank you for helping make that possible. You know, we can talk about the Philippines and we can talk about the Dominican Republic and China. And those are exciting places. But let's bring this on a little bit closer back here to Mississippi. Because one of the chaplains of the Mississippi National Guard about a little over a year ago, wrote us this letter. His name is Chaplain David Morris of the Mississippi National Guard, and he wrote to us, Thank you so much for the New Testaments you gave out this last annual training. I was able to give 150 of them to my troops, many of whom were eager to have a copy of Scripture. Each day I was able to visit the field with God's Word in hand, while our soldiers would take it with appreciation in their hearts and thankfulness for something to read in their downtime. Well, on June 20th of 2013, a young soldier approached me with some great news. He told me he had accepted Christ at a guard shack with a buddy. He told me his buddy had showed him some scripture verses from the New Testament, and he'd accepted Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. This chaplain writes, I thank God for this soldier's decision, and I'm so thankful that you thought of our soldiers and you placed these New Testaments in my hands. And you helped us do that, and we thank you so much again for that partnership. I want to hit you with a big number, five billion, five billion. That's the number of people we conservatively estimate around the world do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so how can we reach them? Well, you've been partnering with us now for 107 years. Uh, again, we're so thankful of that. But we would ask you, first of all, as good partners, to pray for us. Pray that the doors remain open in the fifth grades. Most of the classrooms are, but some are not. Would you pray that the doors to the universities and the schools, and would you pray that we're still able to get into Parchment and Leakesville Prison and all the other avenues, the hotels and motels that God has allowed us to be in. Pray that we, we still are able to do that. And would you think about giving financially? Now, you may have thought that getting is going to get around to giving at some point. That's right. You know, we pay our dues, and that help offsets some of our staff in Nashville, Tennessee, our headquarters. But... Uh, you know what, will you give every penny of that will go for the printing and the distribution, placing a scripture in someone's hand that needs it. It's about $1.25 is the average price of that. So I have a, a, a box of those testaments. I'll be at the back at the end of the service. And a box of those testaments will be about $125. So maybe the Lord's give you the resources to be able to do that. Or maybe you're like, well, that, that's, that's more than I can do. But I could do maybe... Uh, five at 25 or 10 of these hotel Bibles. They're still $5. We estimate they've got about a six-year life expectancy before someone takes them or, you know, someone drops them in the sink or, you know, however. We'll replace those. In fact, we may be one of the few ministries that really encourages people to take our stuff. We'll replace them twice a year. So we're excited about that. And so, you know, that's another way uh, that you can help us is giving financially. If you'll be giving by check, by the way, if you'll make that out to the Gideons International, we would appreciate that. Also, there's a way you can support us year-round. There's a couple ways, in fact. One is through the Gideon Card Bible Program. I just updated your display. I think we got some more cards in there, and that's good. Those are free to you, and you know, you may be able to place those in memory of someone who's gone on to be with the Lord. That's probably our most popular way, but also there are other ways, like thinking of you. You know, someone who's going through some sickness or a hard time in their life, you want them to know you're thinking about them and praying for them. And then there's in recognition. Maybe you've had a blessed event, like when two and a half years ago my granddaughter was born, and well, that was sure a blessed event in our family, and so we received some Bibles. And then my wife's father passed away recently, and many, many Bibles were given in his honor. So those are some of the ways you continue to support us year round. And there's another new way that's only been around a few months. It's called Friends of Gideon's, where you can pray for us, first of all, the most important thing, but also through regular monthly contributions as low as $10 a month, 
we can draft that out and you can support us and be a friend of the Gideons. And there's many things you can receive in partnership with us through that. I'd like to tell you more about that at the end of the service or you can go at gideons.org slash friends as well. It has been wonderful to be with you today and as I close, I want to leave you with a scripture that's very near and dear to my heart. The Bible talks about the power of God's Word in Hebrews 4.12 when it says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Well, Pastor, thank you for allowing us to come and share with you and your congregation, all you folks have been so attentive. We appreciate that and your partnership with us. What the Lord's doing through the work of the Giddings International. Enjoy it Sunday school, and God bless you as we worship now. We do thank you for coming and sharing um, such a great work that y'all do. We appreciate it so much. I know um, I always make a point to when we go to a hotel or somewhere, y'all always open that. And if they're not there, I get, I think, well, no, they didn't have one in this. But somebody might have took that Bible, might and they? Thank you very much for all the work that you do. We're going to sing a song that we... Um, that we just love and and it's because all we're doing is thank you thank you jesus thank you jesus grace that flows like a river washing Sing it with us. Thank you. of our sins he gave us life when he when he raised Christ from the dead it's only by God's grace that you have been saved so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and his kindness toward us as shown in all he's done for us who are united with Christ Jesus God saved you by grace he saved you when he believed when you believed and you can't take credit for that. It was all God's. Get out. I'm giving you life. Yeah.
Come and serve as our ushers, please. Before we sing this song, I want to encourage you, church, as you endure the pain of life and as you go through the frustrations of many prayers that you're just grabbing a hold of, I hope that God will answer. I want to remind you that whatever the outcome of your situation is at this moment, one day you and I will rise on eagle's wings and we will see our Lord and Savior healing us forever. Forever, for good. And the person that you've been praying for will rise healed, painless, victoriously. So as we sing and worship God with this song, I want you to remember there is a hope that's drawing us near. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul, and I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome, and the grave. So 
Thank you, worship team. I want to continue this morning along the same theme of what uh, David was sharing about God's Word. He gave us some examples this morning of, of how God's Word has been used in, in some pretty dramatic circumstances and situations. But I want to ask you this morning, I want to, I want to bring it down to this room, this place, and I want you to look, <laughs> look down where you're seated and recognize yourself. Ask God to show you today. Here's the question. Have you personally, have you personally experienced the power of the Word of God? I want you to ask yourself, have I truly, truly experienced that power? Now the power of the Word of God, we're going to look at it in three ways today. The power of God's written Word. The power of God's spoken Word. And the power of God's living Word. So have you tasted it? Have you known it? Have you experienced it before? I want to read a passage of Scripture to you. This comes out of 1 John chapter 5. Begins in verse 11. It says, And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. Verse 13, he says, I have written this to you. God's written word. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know, not that you may hope, not that you may suspect, not that you may dream, but that you may know that you have eternal life. God's written word. It speaks to itself, it testifies to itself that these things have been written that you may know. Now, I, I guess in a room about this size, there's going to be some of you who are here this morning that may not know, that may not have that assurance of knowing whether or not you have received the gift of eternal life. There may be others of you who sit here today and you know for certain, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that when you pass from this life, that you're going to pass straight to the presence of Jesus Christ. But there's some of you here this morning who may not have any knowledge of knowing whether or not you have that, have experienced the power of God's written word. Because right now you would have to say, Brother Joe, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm here to tell you today that this Word has been written for you. That you can know. You see, you have to understand that there's, as, as, as a created being, that you've been created by God, but you've been born into a sinful nature. It makes it very clear in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, Every, For everyone has sinned, and we fall short of God's glorious standard. Everybody in this room was born a sinner. You have sinned in your life, and the sin that separates you from God. It tells us there's a penalty for that sin. In Romans 6.23 it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, that sin that nature that you've been born with keeps you separate from God until you recognize that, you acknowledge that, you confess that, you repent of that, and you invite Jesus Christ into your heart. This is the written Word of God declaring this to you today. And it says that in Romans chapter 5, 8, that God had a plan. God has a way. And He's showing that way to you today, this moment, this time. It says, God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. 
God has made that way. God has made that plan. And the way that you go about doing it, you find over in Romans chapter 10. And it says this. It says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. It starts here. <laughs> Maybe it starts here. Acknowledging it in your mind, but moving to the heart. And I know, I've told you this before, there are a lot of folks, there are a lot of folks who are going to miss heaven by 18 inches. They're going to miss it between here and here. Because they've got a head knowledge, yeah, I believe that Jesus is the Son of the living God. Well, the Bible tells us that, well, the devils believe that. The demons believe that. But have you transferred it to your heart? Have you moved to a point where you have repented of your sin? If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, then you'd be saved. I've got some real good news for you. Really good news. You can know that you know that you know that you know before you walk out this door today. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, you can nail it down and you can have the certainty in your heart where the power of the written Word of God speaks, convicts, comes into your life and flips it upside down. Changes it. Changes your heart, changes your life. All for the purpose of God and the glory of God. You can know that you know. You can have that assurance. We're going to give you a chance in just a few minutes to do just that. So, Brother Joey, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of quiet. I, I, don't, I don't know that I want to walk all the way down the aisle. I don't know that I want to come down. I don't want to say anything to anybody. Here's what you do in just a few minutes. I'm going to ask you just on faith to come from where you're at. And you're going to make your way down front. And I'm praying that you're not going to be by yourself. I'm going to ask you to come and take my hand and just come to me and tell me what God has spoken to you this morning. What God has said to you. And you and I are going to pray together. And we're going to have that certainty. You're going to have that certainty of knowing that you know before you leave this place that you have a home in heaven waiting for you. The power of God's written word is it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. The power of God's spoken word. I want you to think with me about that. God spoke us into existence. He spoke this world into existence. It says, it says in, uh, let's see, it says here in Psalm 33, verses 6 through 9, it says, the Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. He assigned the sea its boundaries and locked the oceans and vast reservoirs. He let the whole world fear the Lord, and let everyone stand in awe of Him, for when He spoke, the world began. It appeared at His command. It's absolutely incredible to look at this creation that we enjoy day in and day out, and realize that all God did was speak it. He spoke it. His words declared it, and it happened just like that. There's power there. There's power in the spoken word of Jesus Christ. You remember the story we find over in Luke where the, the, the Roman centurion comes to him and says, you know, I have a servant that has fallen sick. Would you come and would you heal him? Or would you heal him? And he says, he says well, let's go. And Jesus says, is ready to go. He says, no, wait. He said, you don't have to go. He says, I'm a man of authority just like you are. I know that when I speak to my my soldiers and my troops, they do what I say. All you've got to do is speak it from right here. 
And Jesus looked and says, I haven't seen this much faith anywhere in Israel. Jesus spoke it, and it happened. He was healed. There's power in the spoken word of God. There's power in the spoken word of Jesus. I'm telling you, there's power in the spoken word that we speak of God's word. Do you believe me? We're going to demonstrate it this morning. I want you to put up that uh, the PowerPoint. Put it up, Romans 8. All right, this is Romans 8, verse 35, 37, 38, and 39. I've, 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 <laughs> I've personalized it. I want you, here's what I want you to do. We're gonna, I want you to see that there's power in the spoken word of God. I want you to stand up. Everybody in the room stand up. We're going to read this together. We're going to read this together, and as we read it, I want you to internalize it and realize that this word is for that person that you've looked at that seat and you saw where you're seated this morning, and it's for you. God is speaking not only to you, but through you, to you, as you speak the word of God. Let's speak it together. Can any, anything ever separate me from Christ's love? Does it mean He no longer loves me if I have trouble or calamity and am persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No! Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is mine. Christ who loved me. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate me from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither my fears for today nor my worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate me from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate me from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, my Lord. My Lord. Amen. Amen. There's power in the spoken word. You can be seated. Did you sense it? Did you experience God's power as you spoke it, as you declared it, as you claimed it, as you <laughs> soaked it in? There's power in God's word. There's power in the written word. There's power in the spoken word. There's also power in the living word. You heard Brother David read the passage of Scripture just a few moments ago in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, For the word of God is alive. The word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest Two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Long ago, God spoke many times, and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, He's spoken to us through His Son, the living Word. God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance, and through the Son, He created the universe. The Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God, and He sustains everything by the mighty power of His command. When He had cleansed us from our sins, He sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave Him is greater than their names. There's power in the living word. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. John 1.1 1, 1 <laughs> talks about that word, that living word that was spoken of in Hebrews that cuts is sharper than any two-edged sword. John 1.1 1, 1, says, In the beginning, the word, the word, Jesus, 
already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never, ever extinguish it. I'm here to tell you this morning, that there is power in the living Word of God. And I want to come back and ask you what I asked you at the very beginning. Do you know in your heart of hearts that you've experienced that living power? That living Word? Have you experienced that written Word? Have you experienced that spoken word? That spoken word is a word that I hope that what we read this morning was an encouragement to you. That's power. God's power. It inspires. It encourages It draws us to Him. And you know, that's what I believe God has done today. There's some of you here this morning that God has has kind of come up through His Spirit and He's kind of put His arm around you. And He's pulling you in close. And He's saying, come to me. Come to me today. Let go of the problems of life. Let go of the difficulties. Let go of the sin that's there. And embrace me. I'm inviting you today. Some of you for the first time. You've never done this before. Some of you it's time that you start living the way God wants you to live. And God is calling you back to Him. Some of you have had doubts for a long time. And it's time to set them aside. So God's calling you today. Here's the question. Will you respond? Because this is all about you and not about anybody else in this room. Father God, I ask right now, I ask, Lord God, that you would make yourself plain in the hearts and minds of your people here today. Lord, I, think, I, I, I sense in my spirit, Father, that there, there, there are those here today Lord, that have never fully given themselves to you. Lord, they've thought about it. And perhaps, Lord, they've even got a head knowledge of who you are, but, Lord, they've never, ever invited you into their heart and into their life. And, Father, today you're calling them to you. You're telling them, Father, that you're inviting them into a personal relationship with yourself. Father, there are, I believe, some in this room that have struggled with doubts and assurance of knowing that they know. And Father, I feel that today you've set that straight. You've told them what they need to do. Father, I ask that you would not only speak the words to call them to be obedient, But Father, give them the courage that's needed to do just that. To be obedient to your calling and to come to you. Father, maybe there's someone here this morning that Lord just needs encouragement. That needs someone to pray for them. Someone, Father, to come alongside them and lift them up. Or they've been shouldering a burden all alone and Lord the burden has been heavy and so Father you're inviting them this morning to come and cast their burdens on you God give them the strength to do just that Father you have spoken draw your people to yourself in Jesus name I pray Amen Would you stand together, please? Turn to him 488, 488. Just stand.